Okay. Um, in this demonstration, um, these are basically the six things that I would like us to do in this project. Um, the most important one actually is going to be number one. That's really why we are doing this assignment is to show you guys how to import um, a pattern that's already been drafted by a different pattern maker or maybe yourself. How do we open that in the Clo uh, 3D software? So that is something new that we are focusing on. These other steps you have briefly been introduced to. I know where it's only module three and you guys probably feel overwhelmed, but um, so these are really just um, to go back and to practice more because obviously I realize you're not totally proficient in all of them. So number two, it's to open an avatar with specific sizing. So last module, you all created your own avatar with specific sizing. So open up that avatar, but you need to make sure that the pattern that you are importing has been designed um, to meet measurements for your specific avatar. So that is going to be a challenge. Um, you want to make sure they match. So it, it fits closely. Of course, in Clo we can do more fitting, but you I mean, you want to make it as easy as possible. You don't want to like open up a size small pattern on a size extra large avatar. It's just going to be a lot of work. It's better to open up size small pattern on size small avatar. You get the idea. So number two, we'll practice opening an avatar because I know you have done that already. Number three, I know briefly you have done arranging pattern pieces. That was one of our technique samples. Um, you are going to practice it again <laughs> with the pattern that you import. Um, you are going to arrange all those pattern pieces in the 3D window. So this is something that does take practice because patterns are different. And so you just, I just think the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Um, number four, you guys are going to sew your pattern. I realize you have had a little bit of practice using the sewing tools, um, but it really takes much practice, a lot of practice before you have total control. I think a lot of you guys too, maybe don't fully understand the difference between segment sewing and free sew. Maybe this is a good opportunity to really jump back and forth between those two tools to see if you can understand the difference. Um, as well. So just more sewing practice is important as well. So we will be doing that. And then of course you need to simulate your pattern once it's been arranged and sewn and make sure it actually fits the avatar correctly. And then you have the option to add fabric. I might briefly demo that really fast, but the next, um, not maybe coming up in a module, we will dive deeper into fabric. So don't worry there, but if you'd like to explore a little bit on your own, feel free to. Okay, so this is our goal. So I recommend going and getting a 2D pattern. I am sharing this website with everyone called Lakala, I believe. Um, you can get free patterns here, so I thought it would be good. If any of you guys already have 2D patterns on your computer that you'd like to use, go ahead, or if you know of a different website, share it with everyone, let us all know. Um, but this is an option for you to grab a pattern. So I'm not having us all use the same pattern like how I did with the technique samples. This is more project-based. Um, so it is gonna be more challenging when we all choose our own patterns. And I think that's a good thing. Um, I think it'll help with learning. Okay, so you can choose, um, I guess you can't choose girls, right? Only women, men, and boys. I'm gonna choose women. And I recommend trying to find something, you know, somewhat simple since again, it is only module three. I'm gonna go ahead and choose a blouse here. So I'm gonna click on that link. These are some patterns that are free. Great. I think I'll choose this first one. So I will click it. And we have lots of choices here. Apply standard measurements. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I'm gonna do the US size 10 measurements. So I have to remember that when I open up my avatar to go pull the size 10 measurements. Um, if you have custom sizes, you can actually type in custom sizes. I think actually even right here is where they do it. Um, so if you have a certain bust or under bust measurement, you can change it yourself. Just note they are in centimeters. Okay. Um, you can do all of that. You can click all these tabs and change whatever you like. Um, now what is important is the file extension. I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to go to Clo. To or open up a 2D pattern, you're going to go File, and you're going to import and add it because you are going to open up your avatar. So we don't want to like open a brand new file. We're adding to this project, okay? So import and add. 
take a minute. I know, I think a lot of you guys might be like, oh, just do open. Yeah, no, for some reason you have to do import and add. So maybe write this down in your notes and just make a note of it. Um, okay, these are the different things we can add. Um, today, we're going to add a DXF file. file. So your, it's gonna be file, whatever your file's name, dot DXF. And this tells the computer that it is a flat pattern, okay? Um, now, when you save a DXF, there are multiple ways to save it. Um, you wanna make sure it's one of these two ways. This just has like more information in it. Um, I did have students last semester who work in the industry and they had DXF files that did not have the AAMA intertwined. Um, so what we ended up doing, we were able to open up the DXF in Adobe Illustrator and then we saved it as a PF, PDF Illustrator file and then we opened up that file as a pattern. So it's kind of an extra step. So you will see if you work with factories that have pattern drafting programs, DXF is the most common extension. Just make sure that they include the AAMA. It's gonna make the file a little bit larger, but that's okay. So anyways, here's my point. We need a file that <laughs> has an extension DXF. So let's go back and you can see these are all the different ways you can save your file. So we wanna make sure we save it as DXF AAMA, not DXF. If we were in my classroom, we have a nice plotter. So I used to tell students to save it as PLT and we could print it out on our plotter, um, but we're not gonna do that today. You can also save it as PDF file, all that stuff. But what you're gonna wanna do today is definitely save the DXF one. Okay, there we are. Um, I don't really think any of the other settings matter. I'll let you do that. So I'm just gonna say add to cart. And let's see here. Dun, 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 dun. Did I add it to my cart? Where's my cart? Oh, I might need to log in, I don't know. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so I went up to my one items, my checkout, check it, my total is zero. I do have an account, so I'll just log in. You might have to make your own or you can continue as a guest. Okay, so it's been submitted successfully and I can click here, download the file. That was pretty quick. Sometimes it does take a minute because they draft it according to whatever measurements you put in. So if you were pretty specific in your measurements, you might not get it until um, you know, an hour or so. But mine, uh, okay, yeah, mine I actually don't have right now either. It has only my instructions. I can download the instructions how to sew it. So I'll have to wait um, probably like, I don't know, 15 to 60 minutes before I have my uh, DXF.